Hey there, how's it going? Hope you're doing well and welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be answering a question about electronic drums and easy drum art that I've gotten a lot lately. So here we go. A while back I made a video about how to connect your electronic drum kit to easy drummer and I show you the steps. I use GarageBand, uh, Studio One, Pro Tools and all that good stuff and a couple different connecting options. And um, if that's something you're interested in how to do that, I'll leave a link in the description down below and you can check that video out. But in that video, I got a lot of questions, which is awesome because I love answering questions and helping people out. Um, but one question I kept kind of getting over and over went something kind of like this. If you have an e-kit with, for example, three tom pads, but the Easy Drummer kit you're using has five toms, how do you control which toms on the Easy Drummer kit each pad is routed to. This is continued in a conversation from a previous comment, but that turned out to be the least of my problems because all the cymbal pads trigger the same cymbal in Easy Drummer. The bass pedal triggers the snare and the hi-hat triggers the cymbal. As far as I know, for whatever stupid reason, you can't determine which signal does what. So kind of the common thread between all these questions is how do I make a pad or, a, or several pads trigger something differently inside of Easy Drummer. Um, if you just got everything connected and your snare's ma not making a snare sound or your tom's not making a tom sound, you know, the very basic stuff, make sure you go to uh, the settings inside of Easy Drummer first and in there you can tell Easy Drummer which kind of module you have, whether you have a Roland or an Alesis or something like that, and that way Easy Drummer knows how to talk to your module better. But if that doesn't work or you're just wanting to set up something custom, that's where this video comes in handy. All right, so as we get started, you can see in here, instead of Easy Drummer, I just have the default kit pulled up that you get with Easy Drummer 2. And I have uh, the modern vintage setting. That doesn't really matter. It's just what I chose just because. And so um, this is kind of what that sounds like. Be prepared to be amazed by my drumming skills. So here we go. Right, so basic drum kit and all that kind of stuff sounds like it should, plays like it should. Now, if you notice, if we look here inside of Easy Drummer, I have five different floor toms available to me, and obviously I only have three toms on my drum kit. My tom one is that high tom, tom two is that first mounted tom, and my floor tom is this low 18 inch floor tom. Let's say I don't like that 18 inch floor tom. Let's say I want to do this uh, 16 inch floor tom. Now, in order to change that up, we have to have some understanding of how things are talking and communicating. And your module, your drum module and Easy Drummer are communicating through what's called MIDI. And MIDI, I think, is an acronym that stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, something like that. Um, but effectively what that is, is it's a very basic computer code language. They're talking to each other in ones and zeros and uh, MIDI commands. So when you hit a drum pad on here, this drum pad is assigned to what's called a MIDI note number. And so I hit this pad and, it, and the drum module says, oh, that pad got hit. And then it sends a signal to Easy Drummer and says, hey, Easy Drummer, play whatever note number this is assigned to and play it at this time, play it for this long, this loud, that kind of stuff. So they're talking back and forth and communicating. Inside of Easy Drummer, every single thing that you can trigger in there, every sound, has a MIDI note number that it's expecting. So if we look inside of the software here, let's look at this uh, low tom here that we're, that we're triggering. If we click this little arrow right here where you can change the sounds, um, now we can come over here to Details, and you'll see right here it says center and rim shot. And those are the two sounds that that tom can make. Um, and so if we look here, it says was it F1 and C sharp four. All right, so if we had a piano here, a keyboard, and it was connected to Easy Drummer, and we hit F on octave one of the keyboard, it's gonna play that center tom hit sound. If we hit 
C sharp four, it's going to play the rims sound. But since we have a drum kit, we don't have those notes really. So we need to switch to MIDI note numbers. And you do that here. If you click this button that says key, now we see numbers. And there's number 41 and number 73. So that is what Easy Drummer is looking for on those sounds. So if I hit this floor tom again, and we look at this MIDI in right here, you can see it lights up. And we are indeed hitting 41. And you can even see that center sound kind of blinks too to let you know. If I hit a different one, you see MIDI N says 47, but we didn't see that light blink on center on this tom. So what we need to do is if we want to trigger this tom here instead, we just open this up again. We have our MIDI information and we need MIDI note number 43. That's all well and fine, but how do we change that? Well. You need to change that on your drum kit and you need to do it on your drum module. So I have a very simple old school drum module. It's a dinosaur by today's standards. It's the Roland TD3, which actually kind of comes in handy because it's very simple to see what's going on. Your module's probably newer and all that stuff or different than mine at least. And you're probably gonna have to look into your owner's manual uh, to see how to change the MIDI note number. So just look in there. So there's something about MIDI and MIDI notes or MIDI note numbers, and you should be able to figure out how to change it on your module. But let's take a look at mine real quick and see how we can change this. All right, so if we take a look at my module here, you can see I'm on drum kit one. Uh, that doesn't really matter a whole lot, but that's just where I am. And to change the MIDI note number, I need to go to the sub menu. And so you can see right here, these little rectangles are my sub menu, and this one right here says note number. Uh, I'm not sure if you can read that on camera, but it says note number. So I gotta hit my edit button here, and I go all the way down here to note number. Now if I hit this floor tom again, we can see it is sending MIDI note number 41. That's what we saw on that large tom, that 18 inch, and we wanna go to that smaller 16 inch one. And so, uh, if you remember correctly, we looked in here and it was number 43. So I just gotta hit up two times. Now it's sending out 43, and you can hear it sounds different. We got this different tom, and we can see it triggering inside of Easy Drummer. So that is basically how you change things, and you can do that for any cymbal, any cymbal sound, auxiliary stuff, uh, whatever is available to you inside of Easy Drummer, essentially. All right, so that wasn't too bad. Let's go a little crazy and say um, maybe we're playing a song with our buddies and we're doing something in the style of Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. All right, if you don't know who they are, make sure you go check them out on Spotify or YouTube or whatever. Good old classic stuff, um, really great songs. But they used a lot of hand claps and stuff like that, you know, back in old school. So we want some hand claps. We don't have hand claps right now. Let's say we want hand claps right here on this tom too because we don't care about this being a tom. Well, if we dive here into Easy Drummer and we see our hand claps here, again, we just click this little down button here and we see group claps and this is called the one shot pad and it is assigned to note number one. That's easy enough. Just going to what we did last time. I hit this tom and then I'm already still on the note number uh, editing parameter here. You can see it's 47, and we just want to drop that down real quick to one, like that. And now we have hand claps. Maybe not the most exciting sound in the world, uh, but it certainly works. And then you could do something like this. Right, so you have hand claps. Um, now, here's kind of a tricky thing, and this applies elsewhere as well uh, in some ways. Let's say you want cowbell. <laughs> you you know, we're doing some old classic rock stuff now. We're moving up into the 70s or whatever, and we want cowbell. <laughs> so uh, we go here to our one-shot pad again, and if we scroll down, we can see cowbell. Now, cowbell, <laughs> is assigned to that same MIDI note number. So we can't do hand claps and cowbell 
Um, so now that I changed that sound right there, and this pad is still assigned to note number one, if I hit this, I get cowbell, right? We have cowbell, we have this tom to that other tom, triggering that other tom and all that kind of stuff. Now here's something really cool. Here's what I love about all, setting all this up. As we looked earlier, I'm on kit number one on my drum, on my drum module, and that kit is now edited. Um, it's got those MIDI note numbers saved. But if I go to kit number two on here, now this tom right here is a tom again. And this tom is that low tom again. On kit number one, that's a crash. On kit number two, it's a ride. So you can say you can save and store custom kits for different songs that you're playing, uh, or different styles that you're playing, uh, or whatever you want to do. If you're doing a live thing, uh, you can switch stuff up really quickly and easily, and have different sounds available to you for particular songs. Um, another thing is, say you know if we look at our uh, Easy Drummer here again, we have the default kit right here, and it's got five different toms and several cymbals and all that stuff. Uh, but what if you also have the Americana kit that Easy Drummer has? Well, it's only got two toms, two crashes, one ride, hi-hat. It doesn't have a whole lot. So you may want to assign a kit on your drum module that plays nice with the Americana kit. And so that way you can have it set up exactly like you want to. So all kinds of options, all kinds of things you do. You can customize for songs, you can customize depending on what kit inside of Easy Drum you're using and all that stuff. And of course this works very similarly with other drum softwares. So if you have the Slate Digital or whatever, I'm sure there's a way to figure out what the MIDI note numbers are there and you can do the same thing, just assign your pads to the note numbers you want to trigger within that software. So it's just MIDI. Technically, if we had like a synthesizer sound, we could trigger a synthesizer sound with our drum. I've played synthesizers on my drums before and people are like, ooh, wow, amazing. It's all just MIDI. It's just talking back and forth and saying, play this note at this time, this loud for this long and several other things, all right? So that's pretty much it. That's how it all works. And now you can go crazy and set up all your custom kits and everything and, and just go to town. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Um, if it was, make sure you give me a thumbs up on it. And uh, if you still have questions, give me a thumbs up anyways, but leave me a comment down below and uh, I'm happy to answer. If I was not clear on something or I missed something or didn't show something for a while, let me know in the comments down below and ask your questions. Again, I love to answer questions and help people out. That's what this is all about. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, Dad Rock and Guitars. Uh, also my website, dadrockandguitars.com. All kinds of cool stuff going on over there songwriting, guitars, uh, this kind of stuff, home recording studio, all that jazz. Also, you've probably seen some videos here. Make sure you check those out. Uh, like, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. And thank you so much again, and we'll see you in the next video.